What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right. Every week, me and my beautiful wife over here, hey, everybody. I bring you guys new tips, tricks, and information to hopefully take your relationship to a new level, an exciting, new, healthy level of love, passion, and everything that comes along with it. So over the years, me and my beautiful wife here, uh, we've went through a ton of different scenarios, situations, trials the good, and tribulations. The bad, the first. ugly, the, 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 the top, the bottom. <laughs> I don't like the bottom, you know? It's, Definitely uh... not. And you know what? You know, we have good friends and we like the people watch. So we've seen so many different scenarios <laughs> go down, you know, that you would never even think of or think this is some movie type stuff that we're talking about. For here, sure, right? for sure. So at that point, like, you know, we want to bring this information to you guys. Now, maybe you're in a relationship right now that's not doing so good. Maybe you're in a relationship that's thriving. Maybe you're just not in a relationship right now and you're looking for that special someone or that right partner. So at that point, like, you know, every week we want to bring you guys something that's going to help you guys out. Something you guys can put in the back of that Rolodex you guys can pull out at any time to be able to utilize. So for this, we want to really talk about, I mean, I guess it's a big, you know, a big thing in relationships. It is a big one, man. Or personally, is financial status, right? And how to be financially responsible. And, and how to share financial responsibility right, properly. Right. And, uh, and be able to trust your partner too as well, right? Because when we start getting in a relationship with somebody, it's not like we do a, a background check or a credit check, or maybe some of you guys do. I mean, maybe you guys should. I've heard of some, <laughs> some people out there actually doing this. So at that point, I don't think it's a bad thing, but I think it's like, you know, in the beginning, you know, that's, I don't know, maybe it just starts off wrong for me because it's not the old school way. Like you meet somebody, you learn about them, you know, people change a little bit through the years too. So they might've been one way, you know, before, and then they've, they've, you know, evolved into something hopefully better. Right. So at that point, you know, I don't want to just want to just, Oh, I already know everything about your past. And like, that's when I'm going to judge you off your past. Well, I know how much you guys like personal stories that I share about John. So this one's a really good one. And he always mentions it too. So when I first met John, right, he always looked real sharp, you know, always looked real good. And anytime we went out with friends or whatever, he would, you know, pick up the tabs and do this and do that. And I'm, I'm like thinking to myself, okay, you know, obviously I'm looking to see what does he drive? And at the time he had an avalanche and he had a, what was the other car? A 300M? 300 M. I think it was. Yeah. yeah he, had, he had those two cars. Um, I hated the truck by the way. Cause I just, I just don't like, I didn't like the truck, but you know, John looks better in his vehicles today. Uh, but anyways, so I obviously wanted to know like, you know, what, okay. So what, what do you do? You, you can ask what you do. It doesn't mean that just cause you do this job that you make good money. Right. So, you know, he was working for a marketing advertising firm and then, you know, he listed like seven other jobs that he did. And I started laughing like, ha ha ha, yeah, right. You don't, you don't own a transmission shop. Yeah, right. Come to find out he actually did own a transmission shop. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is insane. So anyways, I was spending at his house one night and, you know, he, I think he went to work or something and I was still there and I'm like, you know, getting ready or whatever. And, you know, he happened to leave a paycheck stub out on his dresser. Some, you know, me being the incredibly nosy individual that I am, I went ahead and looked at the paycheck stuff because I wanted to see, you know, what is he making? And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, he's making pretty good money. My thing was is that I went home that night and told my dad, I'm like, hey, you know, I met this really good guy, you know, he's super, super humble and he like, he makes good money, but he doesn't act like it. And I'm like, you know, to me, that was like huge for me. You know, I was like, this guy has good money, but he doesn't act like, you know, you know how most guys act if they have money. He wasn't one of those people. So I was like, you know, it just, you know, you didn't really find too many of those guys back in the day. Still to this day, I think it's even more rare that you'll find a guy that's like that. But you know, that's kind of how I found out about John's financial status. Uh, you know, I can't say it was stupid or I knew you were gonna say stupid or I Let me see what else I can find on I, this guy. I, oh, I went. Oh, yeah. Hold on, I went digging for sure. Don't I leave, found everything. Don't leave my home by themselves. I found everything. They're going all your med I, cabinets, pictures, yeah, they're, diaries. They're looking at your computer. Letters, they're looking at video. Videos. Like, oh, oh, I got all the good stuff. <laughs> like, what is this? Why were you doing this ten years ago? What is wrong with you? I've only known you for three weeks <laughs> <laughs> funny story you know but um i mean it's a, you know i think it's important that you know you know the financial status i think at some point in relationship, where, where do you think that point would be like I that mean, you should probably know that time frame? i think honestly a couple months in right i mean you should pretty much gauge like hey listen what is what does this person do for a career right what are they doing as far as that goes now there's two types of people right one they're just having fun they could care less but sometimes those turn into relationships too so you really do want to find this information out and learn about your partner right and be like hey listen what are you doing you know because listen they could be a drug dealer they can be making really good money 
<laughs> but at that point, we could put you into jeopardy too as well. Right, right, right. So there's different things that, you know, maybe you're okay with, maybe you're not okay with. And at that point, you know, you find these things out, you know, but as you're going into it and then the next step, I guess, would when be- When you guys get to a relationship. When you're in the relationship, then it starts getting a little bit more like, serious okay, now. Yeah, how, how far right? down the line? It's like, okay, You guys can buy accounts. things, bank accounts, but then, you know, moving in together, then now you're both going to be on a lease per se, or you're on a mortgage. And this is going to show- you, you know what your credit rating score credit is score. and that's going to be a big eye opener for you you know uh. usually people that have low credit scores <laughs> have either been and made bad financial situations mm -hmm. or, or decisions or you know somebody's brought them down to as well i mean at that point you really want to gauge on that and that's why a lot of people look at credit scores you know whether you're getting a car whether you're getting a house uh whether they're going to extend you credit for anything they want to look at this because it does show consistency about who you are and, and the importance of do you think bills are important to pay or not? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really, really comes down to, and are they going to get their money or not? So, you know, I think this is something you need to really look at. And, you know, if you're going to go to the next step of maybe getting married, you know, you should be talking about possible debts, right? Now I have, you know, $50,000 in college debt. I have, you know, $100,000 in credit card debt. Because once you get married, now you're going to be on the hook to a certain degree of those liabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, you don't want to be like, oh, now, the other flip side to this, what if you guys start out and you guys are all good, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the past. But the problem is, is that you guys aren't agreeing on how to spend money. That's right? the big one, guys. So the biggest thing is, is to get on the same page. Yeah. I think if you align yourself and you get the exact same goals and you have the exact same mission, you guys are both working towards that goal and mission to accomplish it. And if it's, hey, listen, we need to get a down payment for a house. All right, so we need to put $20,000 in the bank because we're looking at buying a $200,000 house or $400,000, whatever it is. And you guys start working towards that goal. Now, you know, you have the wife that goes, you know what, I'm going to Louis Vuitton. She gets two purses. Now, what, $10,000 of your money is gone from your deposit. Mm -hmm. This isn't a smart move on her behalf. And you guys need to talk about that and say, hey, listen, this is not what we plan to do. Now, if they keep disagreeing with it, this might not be the financial I think that's like that, that's, that's the big one, right? Is that, you know, people will just go out and just spend the money, especially right. if both the parties are working, right? Because right. both parties are working. Let's say they both get direct deposit into their bank account. They're like, well, that's my money and that's your money. So if I want to go and have a lavish lunch with my friends, then I'm going to just go do that. But you didn't really clear it with your significant other and you guys might be struggling for money. Right. And that's not what you should be doing. I right. mean, my parents used to fight about it all the time. That is what almost every, I would say 90% of their fights was about money. Yeah. It was it's, terrible. It's a big one. It's a, it's a big uh, deal breaker for a lot of relationships, a lot of business partners. I mean, anything. Dealing with money is a very, very serious thing. And, you know, sometimes it makes people good and sometimes it makes people even worse. So at that point, like, you, know, you just need to have that conversation with your partner, be able to trust your partner. And then when you guys really start accumulating and going together, it's a big, serious thing. Because at that point, if you guys do establish a bank account together, you're both signers on that account, then anybody could take that money out of the account at any point in time too as well. Mm -hmm. And I've had some of my friends <laughs> where girls have you know, thought, this guy's gonna leave me, I'm gonna take everything he's got out of the bank account and actually did it. So at that point, you know, you always wanna cover your butt too as well. But if you're in a relationship with somebody and you think that they really love you, you really love them and you trust each other because that's a big foundation part. Trust. Got it. Trust and communication. You don't have, you don't have trust. I mean, you might as well just be, you know, you're on a weak foundation that's just going to fall over at any time. You just don't know when. Mm -hmm. So these are some big things and financial responsibility, especially in a relationship between the two partners is a very, very serious thing especially if you're planning for a future family or whatever you guys are trying to do. Mm -hmm. But you guys need to be on the same page. You need to work together. You guys need to have goals and the do's or don'ts. You gotta have a team. And you know what? Be realistic about it too. If you got a girl that likes to go out, you wanna treat her too as well. So set aside a little budget for, for shopping or, or whatever it is. And then everything goes good in the, the, the big pot. And they say, listen, honey, here's some money. Go do whatever you want with it. <laughs> I think it'll make them feel a lot better and that will help you guys to accomplish your goal. And like I said, if they don't get on that or they keep going against what you're doing, then you guys are going to have to set some other policies or some things in policy. Well, something. <laughs> the verbiage. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have to set something in place. Some boundaries right? for sure. For so sure. listen, that's just our tip of the week from you guys for Cupid's Corner. Remember, you guys can see us on ABC every Sunday at 11 a.m., right? 30 minutes, you guys can see everything about me and Sharice, plus our Cupid's Corner, give you guys great information, tips, tricks, and things that you guys can definitely, definitely get something from for sure. So you guys can watch it live, DVR it, or if you don't get to do either one of those, you guys can always go over to our YouTube and watch the whole entire episode and all the other episodes. And if you don't like to watch us, 
just go to our podcast. You guys can listen to us on the road while you're working out, whatever you're doing. So we'll see you <laughs> next Sunday, 11 a.m. Cupid's Corner, baby. Tight Medical Health and Lifestyle Show coming at you guys. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you guys for all the support. See you then.